Hey guys, Luke here, Talks to you, and winter's here and it's a bit cold. But you know what hates it more than me? The cars. So we need to prepare this car for winter. There's a few things I do each year, so I'm gonna go through the steps with you, just to show what I do to keep this car safe. So uh, first thing I wanna do is look at the visibility of the car because having clean glass, making sure you can see other drivers and they can see you, is the most important thing, I think. So let's go inside the car now and I'll show you what to do. Although it doesn't look too dirty in the middle of the day, the actual windscreen inside is very, very filthy. And this really shows up at night time when lights are hitting it. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this first using three simple steps. We start off by just getting our cloth, not applying anything to it yet, just go across the entire windscreen, put some pressure on it, get as much grease off as you can, and do that for the entire windscreen. Apply some isopropyl alcohol to it, just a clean cloth, and this is gonna degrease the window. So get a clean cloth, apply some alcohol to it, and then just the same as before, go with the entire window. This will dry really quick, take a lot of the grease off, really give you a good finish when you're done. Finally, when you're done with the alcohol, grab your favourite glass cleaner, another clean cloth or third microfiber towel, and do the exact same thing to the windscreen. Just apply the glass cleaner to your cloth, go over the entire windscreen. Once your glass is clean, remember to do the rest of the glass, such as your side windows and your rear window. And also, don't forget to do your rear view mirror, that can get quite dirty as well. Give all the exterior glass a good going over. And make sure to get underneath where the wiper blades are and give the wipers a clean too. Well, yeah, so make sure to give the lights a good clean as well. And just wash the windows off and then dry off for a drying towel. Then just give it going over some more glass cleaner. Again, microfibers work better, but if not, paper towels will do just fine. Wipe it off with a dry towel. After your glass is done, it's worth having a check of the wipers. So just run your fingers along them. Look for any splits and tears. For example, these ones are quite good. However, they are leaving a nasty, greasy smear right across from your line when it's sight from driving. So just to get rid of stuff like that, Grab some white vinegar, stick on a cloth, and then just rub it up and down the blade to get all that grease off and make your wipers as good as new. Just look at the amount of dirt that's come off them. Now that the wipers are done, there's one final thing to do to the windscreen. Although it's nice and clean, what you notice is when it rains, the water will pool and won't run off the surface. So we're going to apply some rain next to this and it's actually going to let the water bead and speed fly off and sometimes you don't even need your wipers. And here's a car's glass that's been untreated. The water stays on the windscreen and doesn't really run off that quick. What's the rain next applied? The water just runs straight off. A standard rain next is a little bit harder to apply. You have to stick it on, let it dry, and then wipe it off. But this one is the Rain-X rain repellent and glass cleaner and just sprays on dead easy, just like this. No drying, just wipe it straight off and applied. In the winter, one of the most common things to fail is the battery. Batteries just don't like cold weather and they only designed to last for about five years. So for example, on this car, this battery is actually seven years old, so it's going towards the end of its life. Oh, I'd assume so anyway. So it's worth going down to your local motor factors, something like your local health fits, and they'll do a free battery test for you on the car. Basically, all they do is check the starting capacity of the battery, put an electronic tester on, and see how much amps are left and how much that full capacity is still there to charge the battery. As you can see on this car, this car is actually providing 107% of the overall amperage. So even though it's seven years old, it's actually higher rated than was new. So we've got a good battery on this car. You might not, so it's worth checking it. But what if your battery does fail? Well, you need some way of starting your car again. Now, jump leads are the most obvious choice. Someone can also help you bump start the car. But the one I like to keep in is a little tiny jump starter like this. And these are great because the big packs we used to have, these do the exact same job. And this can start this car about 10 times. And these are very, very simple. You just keep them in the boot or your glove box. And you just connect the, just connect the cocktail clips into the jump starter. Connect it to your battery. Push your power button, give it a few seconds to go green lights, and then we're good to go. 
And these are especially great because if you're stuck up in an empty car park, side of the road where no one else is around, there's no one to help you start the car, so you can start it yourself. And these are very vital, I think, to keep in your car. And additionally, you can also charge your mobile phone and your tablets from the, uh, the USB ports. Now, coolant is one thing that should be checked during the winter because it's very important in keeping the car going. Essentially, what it does is cool the engine. It's a mixture of antifreeze and water. And as it goes through the engine block, it takes the heat away and passes over the radiator, so it gets cooled and the cycle repeats. But if there's not enough antifreeze in the air during the cold weather, this can actually freeze. And if that freezes in your engine block, that's bad news. Ice expands, and well, you don't want expanded ice in your engine block now, do you? So we're going to do a test on this to see what temperatures to go down to to make sure it's okay for the winter. I'm going to use an antifreeze and coolant tester, and these are very cheap to pick up from your local parts store. And on the front here, it shows you what temperature this will protect down to in the cold weather. On the back, I'll show you how uh, high of a temperature this will protect to. In the UK, this is not going to be so much of a problem, but we do want to focus on the cold temperature. To use it, just simply back the cap off. Now, if the car's warm, watch out, because this can be actually quite hot. You don't want to uh, pressurise container to get your hands. You hear that? And very simply, all we do is, with this, we stick it in the antifreeze. We push this to make it go up and fill it to the level line here and it gives us a reading of where we need to be. Just give a gentle flick, remove any bubbles. Make sure this indicator is level so it's vertical. And if we look here, our coolant is almost off the scale. It's actually only protecting down to about minus, maybe minus 12. So that definitely needs some coolant in here, otherwise the car's going to uh, freeze in the winter. So it's a good job we tested that. For the sake of this car, you can see that's been neglected. The level's below the min anyway, so that's bad news. But I'm going to get some answers for you, stick them in. Make sure you get the right one for your car. Just look in the car's manual. I'll tell you which one you need. And let's dip this again and see what temperature we get to. So let's just give it a gentle flick again to make sure all the bubbles are removed. And as you can see now, the temperature's hovering somewhere around 22 degrees, minus 22 degrees Celsius. So it's gonna be absolutely fine for the UK winters and the car's not going to freeze. Lights get a heck of a lot more use in the winter. So make sure they're all working because they help other road users to see you and help you to see the roads. You're gonna be using them a lot, so make sure they're all right. And also consider fitting brighter bulbs. For example, these LED side lights are much more visible during the daytime to other road users. And even consider upgrading natural headlight bulbs. Just make sure if you're upgrading to brighter bulbs, make sure they're leveled right for the courtesy of other road users. Now, as the cold weather comes in in the winter, the pressure inside the tyre drops. So as it's going through late autumn, early winter, just keep checking the pressure on these tyres because you'll come out in a few mornings and you find it's actually quite flat on the bottom. Now, checking your owner's manual to see what it should be. But just get your foot pump, connect it up and just keep topping it up as it gets colder and colder. The minimum tread depth for tyres in the UK is 1.6mm, but that's a minimum and really in winter that's, that's no good. 3mm should really for safety be what you need because these grooves in the tread, these are designed to help water disperse away from the tyre, which means your wheels don't aquaplane. So in wet weather, your car keeps contact with the road. Remember, these four pieces of rubber are the only things that keep the car in contact, so it makes sense to make sure these are in as good condition as possible. And if you're more serious, you could even consider fitting winter tyres and below 7 degrees Celsius, they provide a lot more grip than summer tyres on the car, which is going to help with acceleration, cornering and braking, making your car safer altogether. I know, I don't blame you for not wanting to wash your car during the winter. It's horrible in the cold weather, isn't it? I mean, look at the car, it's absolutely filthy. But it's worth doing one proper wash just before winter and then coating a layer of wax because this is going to stop salts penetrating the paint and hopefully stop corrosion on the car. Now, if you don't want to hand wash your car in the middle of winter and you don't want to go to an automatic car wash, just go to your local garage and they have the pressure washers you can stick a pound in. You can have them for like a couple of minutes. Just give the car a blast over, get all that salt off. Just keep the car nice and free from that because that's the worst thing for your car really. It's the salt on the paint's work. So there you have it guys. If this video has been useful to you, give it a like, subscribe or leave a comment in the section below. Take care and stay safe.